All right, we've got a, our start-stop control here. And again, we talked about pulling the timers out of your start-stop loop. So we've got start-stop overload running an internal coil called sysrun. Sysrun will enable our off-delay timer. Now we talked about not, we're not able to put an overload contact here, so we use our off-delay timer to drive another coil. So when your timer is on and the overload is passing power through there, motor one will be on. So I'll come over here, I'll start it. Okay, we're running. Okay, so our motor one is on. Now, if it goes off on overload, this timer is going to start timing, and since it's tense and we've got 300, the motor will remain on for 30 seconds after the overload trips. Okay, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go over here and force that off. Okay, so we timer loses power flow. It's still counting, okay, but the overload is tripped because I have it here. Now, if I reset that overload, if I immediately go and reset overload while it's still counting, okay, the timer is on, the overload's on, look what happens. The motor is back on because the timer was still counting. So one of the things we might want to do when an overload trips is we might want to go and reset the CV of that timer immediately to its max count. Its max count is going to be 300. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. We'll put a set of contacts in here. So when my overloads trip, okay, put in there. The overload trips. I'm going to come here and I'm going to use a new function that you haven't seen yet. It's called move word. Move in, move boolean, move real, move word. Now what this will do, this move word function, okay? Let me zoom in on this here. Okay? When power flow is turned on, it will move whatever's here into an address pointed to here. Now I can use a register there, so I can take a timer value and move it from one timer to another. Or in this case, I want to move a constant, a constant value of 300 into the CV of my timer. Okay? The CV is which offset? 0, 1, or 2? CV is the first one on a timer. Remember, it's CV, then PV, then the control word, right? I didn't watch the whole lecture yet. But Pardon me? I didn't finish the lecture yet. So. Okay. Now, I can put a constant here, but I know I'm working with timer one, right? And that the PV is my second register of the timer, and I know I'm working with timer one. Let me first put a constant here. Okay? I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put 300. And I'm going to put the result in timer 1. Register 1. Okay? So in this trips, it will do a move word of 300 right there into, into the CV and the off delay timer will shut off. Let's go back through here. We're going to stop the PLC. Reload this down into the PLC. Okay. Come back over here. I'm going to zoom out so we can see this process again. Okay. Now. Okay. I'm going to turn that on, turn that on, turn that on. 
Okay. Now I'm going to do a quick force off. Well, we did this force off before. The timer stayed on, didn't it? And the overload opened. Watch what happens now. Timer immediately went to 300. This is off, that's off, the motor stays off. I am now going to go reset the overload. And it doesn't come on. Just with this move word. That triggered it. Move 300 into the timer, resets the timer. So when you have that off delay and it's triggered by an overload, using the move word into the current value. Yes? So you don't need to bring that circuit clear across? No, you don't need to. It's just it's done. You don't have to put a coil. I can put other move words or other functions after there, but if there's nothing so, after that, it just says, oh, there's nothing more and I move on. So once that gets energized, it, it sends that functional... That once this is energized, it picks up 300 and writes it in to that address. Pardon me? Yeah. Now, let's, let's talk about something here about program maintenance and good programming practices. I have 300 here and I have 300 here, right? What happens if I come along at some later date and my specifications change and now I need to make that 500? I need to remember that I have to change that to 500 also, right? Potential problem. But we do know that register 2 is this value of PV, isn't it? So rather than using a constant, I can come over here and type right there, okay, 2R. So in this case, it'll say whatever is in register 2, pick it up and move it over to register 1. Boom, job done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, I'm going to change this to 500. Okay? So if 500 is stored in register 2, the current value is in register 1. It will pick up whatever value is in register 2 and stick it into register 1. The two of them will be equal now and the timer won't operate. Okay? Let's watch what happens. Stop the PLC. Okay, we run it. Whoops. I need to download it first. Here we go. Okay. Downloading everything. Okay. Here we go. Pour us on. Pour us on. Pour us on. Okay, motor's running, right? We're all set up here. We have zero. The CV is set to zero. It's ready to start timing, right? Now, if I trip this overload, it, look at what it's doing. It's pointing to register 2, and it's telling us that in register 2 has a value of 500. And it's just waiting. It's just waiting to move that 500 into timer 1. And as soon as this goes true, it will pick up the value that's stored there, which is case 500, and move it over there to timer 1. Here we go. It did it. Did you see that? Boom, 500. Now if I come back over here, turn it back on again, reset our overload. The motor never continued on once the overload was tripped. Okay, so we got two things learned, actually three new concepts here. You've got a move word, which you're able to move data around the PLC. Taking one word, starting at that address, and moving it into that address. You could also take a constant and put a constant value, a fixed value, and move it into that address. 
If you have a large array of data that you wanted to clear out or zero out, you could put a zero here, put your starting address, change that to say 100, then starting at timer 1, 100 addresses would all be zeroed out. Okay? Boom. Done. So if you have an average array that you're working with or some data values you're working with, a data table, it's a real quick way to set the data table to whatever value you need it to be set to. Okay? But in our case, we're using move word to reset that off delay timer and shut it down. When we have an overload, we don't want that off delay. Okay? Any questions?